Fun. Uh, Geralf's Messenger, Rakdos Shred Freak, Dreg Mangler, and Desecration Demon. Wow, Desecration Demon. Desecration Demon, that's the 6-6. Uh, six, six. Oh no, sorry, it's, it's the 4-4. Four, yeah, 6-6 six, six for 4. That each turn, the player either has to... The player may sacrifice a creature to tap it, but if they do, it gets bigger. Right. And uh, he's playing against Adam Prozac on the right, who's playing a really, really interesting deck. He's, he's also playing a Lawleth Troll deck, but his is a lot different. He has Faithless Lootings and Grizzly Salvage with Liliana of the Veil. Those sort of form his backbone. Now, what he's doing with those, he's putting uh, Veilborn Ghouls in the graveyard, and um, he's putting Se uh, Sever the Bloodlines in the graveyard. Really just kind of uh, kind of more of a rock-style deck. He has Olivia Valdarin, Thragtusk. Right, so Prozac leading out on a Evolving Wild and Diagraph Ghoul out of Kyle Wright. Kyle really becoming the aggro here. So Adam is going to get a Swamp on end step. The Veilborn Ghoul is interesting because it, it probably has never been cast in Adam's deck. It's fodder for Faithless Lootings and it's fodder for Lot Left Trolls. Also Liliana of the Veil. It, right. It's really a solid role player in his deck. And you know, if the game does go that long, it's a 4-1. It's not it completely very blank. similarly to how Squee used to be used in older decks, actually. Yeah. Uh, turn 2 Force from Adam. Uh, no plays. So Black Green Mana Base is out of both of them. As Kyle's going to play an Overgrown Tomb here, dropping himself to 18. Yep, it uh, looks like Adam Prozac setting up a likely Grizzly Salvage. End of turn. Kyle hits Adam. Both players now at 18. And a Grave Crawler from Kyle Wright. Passing the turn. So the question is, why was the, the tomb untapped? Presumably because he has a tragic slip. And Sep Grizzly Salvage is going to happen here. Oh, and Salvage flips four lands and a sever. Adam has to decide what he wants, and it looks like it's Swamp. Possibly indicating a Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Which, all in all, is pretty weak against Black Green Zombies. And there it is, that's a freshly drawn Liliana. Yeah, Liliana's pretty unexciting on this board. You know, one card notably absent from Adam Trozak's deck uh, is actually the one we were just talking about. Let's see here. Uh, make sure it's not in the sideboard. Liliana is going to get cast, and that will edict Kyle Wright's uh, grave crawler. So it's really a stopgap measure there. Wow, yeah. Now, Adam Prozac really must not have had anything else to play there. I mean, that's fine. It does still slow him down. Adam's just trying to keep the game going. Uh, Diagraph Ghoul will take down Liliana. Gravecrawler will be recast by Kyle Wright. He does not have a third land. He's going to make Rakdos Cackler, and he is unleashing it. So remember, that is Cackler, not a zombie. But he has three two-power creatures in play. No third land from Kyle. Um, Adam now with the third color, Dragon Skull Summit, and Olivia Voldarin now. Wow. And Kyle, I believe, does have a tragic slip from when he left up that mana last turn. He still has not hit his land, which could be... It's gonna, I mean, Olivia obviously is very strong here. Uh, all three attacks by Kyle. And now Adam Prozac has to think about that one mana that Kyle left up with the Overgrown to him. He has to be drink, uh, he, he has to right. be thinking Tragic Slip here. I don't... He's going to take all the damage. Doesn't oh. seem like... He doesn't want Tragic Slip to be able to be triggered. And two mana, Kyle's going to sign in Blood targeting himself. So Kyle drops to 16. The question is, with only one red mana, does it matter? Can Adam do something relevant to you? If, if Kyle draws a Swamp, he'll still have Slip up. He drew Cavern of Souls. Wow. And probably set to Zombie. We'll get a confirmation on that. Passing the turn to Adam Prosak. Adam with a Sever the Bloodline in his hand, but instead is just going to pass yeah. the turn, sit on his Olivia. Cavern set to Zombie. Play, he plays Evolving Wilds. So this will pass back to Kyle. So Olivia threatening to become a 4-4. Alright. Kyle's really choked up a bit on his mana, but the thing is is that he, he doesn't have too much too much farther left to go. Um, in the sense that Adam's at 12. Adam does play three Thrag Tusk, which Kyle may or may not know. Uh, he's going to attempt to rank her. 
the wow, grave crawler. Grave crawler. Well, what weird. he's looking for, I think he's trying to bait a shock here so that he can tragic slip Olivia and swing. Right. This is a pretty good bait, and I think Adam has to take it, actually. Looks like he might respond with a grizzly shot. Potential fair. Or abrupt. Or abrupt. Or abrupt. I mean, it looks like he's looking at abrupt decay mana. Oh no, it, look, it looks like uh, Adam, Golgari no abrupt decay. Okay, okay. Golgari Charm. So you can go Charm giving all Kyle's creatures minus one, minus one. Uh, really a strong play here. Yep. But that's going to allow for a tragic slip, and he's going to kill the going to kill the Diagraph Ghoul. Yep, so Kyle Wright was able to deal with that Olivia, but at a price. He lost three cards for that. Right, and he's only going to be able to deal one damage to Adam, dropping Adam to 11. Still, though, the thing about the zombie deck, they really don't have to do that much damage via the combat stick uh, to be able to win. Rolf's Messenger is a... Uh, that card is a beating. Right. And it's, it's also it's a beating in the sense that it's not a card that Adam can very readily deal with. No, he has to kill that via combat. Unless, of course, he Olivia's it. Four Pillars of Flame. And crack the Evolving Wilds for a sec third Swamp. Doesn't Not looking for more green mana, and it's really Thrag Test that he's hoping to ca to draw into if he does not already have it. He has a Sever in hand, and other cards which remain to be seen. Yeah, and it looks like a lot of pros uh, really go into the Pillar of Flame as, as their go-to removal spell. They might have expected a lot of messengers today. Yeah. Uh, Evolving Wilds. And the Mountain in the Graveyard, so Adam is going to have to go get a Swamp because his deck is only playing one Mountain, one Forest, and those are all four of the swamps. So I believe, I want to say he has a fourth Evolving Wilds in his hand, which so is now a dead, yeah, he does, which is, I'm sorry, that's his graveyard. Yeah, probably rethinking uh, his mana yeah, base. Yeah, he has right Veilborn Ghoul in his hand. It's another card. Uh, it's going to Grizzly Salvage. There's a Liliana, there's a Lotleth Troll. The Lotleth Troll he cannot cast this turn. Interestingly enough, because by cracking his Evolving Wilds, he got a fresh top of his deck, but now that means he's not going to be able to make a land off this turn to get his Baleborn Ghoul back. Not that that particularly matters. Baleborn Ghoul getting, coming back is kind of a... Well, I suppose he doesn't have too many Swamps left. Right, he has zero basic Swamps left. Now, he does play four Blood Crypt, four Overgrown Tomb, so he will be able to trigger it, but right. not quite uh, with the Evolving Wilds like he wants to. Adam drawing an unfortunate number of his basics this game. Alright, so we Cat Rakdos Cackler is joined by Rakdos Shred Freak, dropping Prosac to seven life. Uh, and Adam's gotta hope to find a Thrag Tusk. Yeah, he needs one very soon. There's a pillar, and that combined with Severn. Oh, that's well, a faithless that's looting. A faithless looting. Liliana and I will leave Grizzly Salvage. We're drawn, or it's Rak no, Rakdos Charm. Cards looking, look very similar. Both are Rakdos Seekers. He discards the Veilborn Ghoul and the Lotleth Troll. So he decides that's not the way he wants to go this game instead. Minus one, minus one to your creatures. Kills that Shred Freak. Liliana deals with the Cackler. Right. So he's cleared all the creatures off the board. Kyle Wright, though, remember, still with that full grip of creatures. And we're kind of, and Shred Freak is going to come down, Ooh. knock out Liliana, and he's got to be upset that that, that, I mean, that cavern's been set to zombies, but maybe it should have been set to demons, or devils, sorry. Yeah, and it's Blood Crypt gets back a pair of Veilborn Ghouls, wow. which will be great with the Faithless looting. And there's a Sever the Bloodline that'll take care of Kyle's only creature, but Kyle with full grip, one of which is a Dross Messenger. Right, now there's a Sever in the yard, so Jarl's Messenger actually is only a shock here. Yep. Second cavern down. Uh, Jarl's Messenger, Jarl's Messenger will put Prosac to five. Yep. Adam, five life. At the same time, though, that'll make him tap out to use that Sever, meaning that Gravecrawler will get in for at least two. Right, a, a real, fairly relevant two, also. Adam, really on the back foot here. And it looks like both caverns are on zombie. Yep. He's going to sever the messenger. So Kyle has to be sure not to play two creatures with the same name at this mm. point. Overgrown Tomb untapped. Dropping Adam to three. 
free life, not a great place to be against a zombie deck. Now we're being, and Desecration Demon. Wow. And Rakdos Cackler, all right. There are actually no f legit sweepers in Adam's deck. Yeah, he needs a Thrag Tusker now. Couldn't tell what that was. Might have been another Veilborn duel. Great card advantage engine, not a great draw at this point. I'm gonna flash back Faithless Looting. Remember, he has two Veilborn duels in his hand, so it'll easily be fodder for that. And he will scoop it up. Black Green Zombies gets the first game. The mid Faithless Looting scoop doesn't want to reveal anything else to Kyle right there. Right. So looking at so let's look at what they're doing in this matchup. Um, certainly, I think the aggressor here appears to be Kyle. Oh yeah, for sure. If he lets Adam get to the long game, Adam will certainly take it over with Thrag Tusk, Failborn Ghouls, Lala Trolls. He has a lot of late game tools, but that said, he has to survive. He has to survive that long. So outside of what we already have seen out of Adam's deck um, to be able to deal with Kyle, what else is he going to be able to bring in to help, to, to basically just stop an initial onslaught? Yeah, well, he's, he's definitely going to side about all the Veilborn Ghouls, I think. Uh, if, if I was Adam, that's what I'd do. I, I would side out the Veilborn Ghouls, I would side out the Lilianas. I would bring in all of the mid-range creatures. The Olivia, so, so he has a third Olivia. He has two Hunt Masters, he has two Deathrite Shaman, two Curse of Death's Hold, two Mutilate. So he, he really has a lot of ways to deal with some creatures, and a lot of versatile ways too, which I really like about his sideboard. Yeah. He needs to draw Hunt Master, for so, sure. Kyle, I think, also will be using uh, Death Rite Shaman out of the board. Hidden from a totally different act area. <laughs> I, I, um, Death Rite Shaman, for those of you not knowing the card, is a one mana black draw, one mana black green hybrid card that for a black mana exiles an instant or sorcery to shock a player, and for a green mana exiles a creature to gain two life. Um, Kyle will be able to really aggressively interact with Adam's deck by using the card on Adam's graveyard. Uh, Adam puts really relevant instants and so and sorceries and creatures in his own graveyard. So that's, I, I mean, the, the source of damage there and the disruption factor seem like that'll be really good for Kyle. Yeah, I, I'm guessing that this is going to be a death rate shaman battle because if both players get it, it's going to turn into a bit of a grind of a game. Uh, Im, important to note, though, that it's a 1-2, so it doesn't die to the tragic slip. At least not the first, uh, not the first tragic slip. Um, Kyle also has access to two Appetite for Brains, which can hit uh, Sever the Bloodline, Olivia, Thrag Tusk, and Veilborn Ghoul, which is probably enough targets that he doesn't have to worry about the card being dead. Uh, the question is, would he still want to side it in to hit those targets? Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of a balancing act whenever you're playing an aggressive deck and, you know, you want to sideboard on all these different cards to fight all these different matchups, but at the same time, you can't dilute your deck too much, because if you do, that's going to give the control deck all the time in the world. Uh, but the Appetite for Brains, I think he has to bring it in. Really, really good against Sever the Bloodline. He can't really deal with an Olivia. He can't really deal with a Huntmaster. He has to at least suspect the Thrag Tusk. I think in the format where it stands right now, you should assume a Thrag Tusk can come out of any deck that plays green. Yeah, for sure. One of the definers. Your deck has to be able to beat a Thrag Tusk. A Thrag Tusk Restoration Angel even, uh, would be even better. So that said, what, who do you like in this matchup? Uh, I, I think I have to give it to Adam. I think his deck just gets a lot more versatile after sideboard. He gets to sideboard a lot of these dead cards out. Veilborn Ghoul is just, it's an ugly card against a black-green zombies deck. That's for sure. Uh, even though he lost game one, I still think he has a little bit of an edge in the post-sideboard matches. Uh, can he win two in a row? It'll be tough, but I like him in this matchup. How about you? Well, I think given between the two of these, I almost want to take the zombie deck. Um, I see that Adam, Adam, I think this matchup's Adam's leaning pretty hard on Pillar of Flame to get him through the early game, and I just don't think he's going to be able to draw enough Pillar of Flames in both games to still stay, to stay with it. I think as we saw in that match before, um, Kyle's able to push damage pretty hard, and I'd like him to be able to, at least in one of the games, find a way to push 20. Yeah. And you know, that is true about this Zombies deck. In the past, the Zombies deck used to have to play a lot of sort of mediocre cards on curve. They used to have to play a 4-drop in the form of Obliterator, that, uh, you know, more 3-drops. This deck is really streamlined. He has the Shred Freaks, he has the Cacklers, he has the Wall F Troll. Just has way better threats at all points of the curve. I actually want to talk about those two guys, the Shred Freaks and Cacklers. Um, how excited are you about Rakdos Shred Freak? 
Um, I think I think it's a decent role player. I think a lot of these. Well, I think that Kyle is definitely going in the right direction, not making all his creatures zombies. Because I think that's sort of a crutch. I think if you lean on that, your deck's just not, not going to be as good. I, I like this Red Freak. So we have... It's Adam. Okay, Adam, turn one, Blood Grip's tapped, and he's going to Pillar of Flame the one drop out of Kyle and get his mana going. Zombie out of Kyle makes a Grave Crawler, and there we see the Death Rite Shaman. Wow, Already so, with a target. Yeah, Kyle Wright, uh, three one drops. Exactly. Good for his deck. Yeah, exactly the draw he wants to have. And Lotleth Troll out of Adam Prosak. So Adam's managed to stay at 20. I think this is what you were saying before. Uh, it's a pretty good situation for Adam Prosak, and he's already at 20. Yeah, this is perfect. This is exactly but the draw he needed. Love to see a tragic slip from Kyle right here. The block, regen. So Adam immediately calls that bluff from Kyle. He knows that he has to stay as high a life total as possible. And I, I'm assuming that there's a there's a play from Kyle coming up here. Uh, no, there's not. All right. Maybe thinking about tragic slipping. Oh wow, it just says go. Interesting. Um, I don't really understand that play very much. No, Kyle must have just put Adam on not blocking, but Adam. Maybe he thought the regeneration was green, but it's not. It's black. Uh, maybe. And lot left troll will get back in there. That's a pretty big game changing. That's a game changer of a play there, especially Kyle missing his third land drop. And now pretty far behind. <laughs> For sure. And that death right shaman. Not oh, guys, and weird. he does not end step the death right shaman on the pillar of flame. Wow, interesting. I think my guess here is that Kyle's probably a little on edge because of the play he made last turn. And at this point, probably playing a little quick. Uh, just needs to slow down a bit, you know. There was that Pillar of Flame trigger, which would have been very good for him. So. Yeah. It's yeah. really easy to beat yourself up over it, but at the same time, it's not going to actually change anything. Kyle Wright couldn't have played anything anyway. He'll just you can get make the mistakes, this turn. especially when on camera, you can make mistakes, and then you can win games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's fine. But I, I think this game's getting pretty out of reach here. So Kyle, Adam Prosek up to 25, he makes a turn 5 Thrag Tusk. Kyle's still on two creatures. So, okay. See, and then Kyle, Adam drops down to 23. Uh, Kyle does hit. Death hit the Death Rite Shaman. Kyle will need to land here. Well, that's a Grave Crawler. It's a Grave Crawler. Uh, his hand, yeah, he's, he's going to concede this. Just packs it in. Packs in his three permanents. How many land is he playing here? Uh, he is playing 21 lands. So that that's fine. That's about all I would want to. Right. That does mean, though, that it is a, a little easy to get flooded. Especially if you're signing in things like Two Sever the Bloodline and Thrag Tusk, which... I'm not saying he wants them in this matchup, but when you have cards like that in your sideboard that are four, five mana, seven mana on the flashback, you usually want one or two lands on the board too. I would agree. So Kyle Wright doesn't look too happy about that. I'm laughing with Prozac about uh, that last game. Adam happy to be at 1-1, but he'll have to win this one on the draw. He'll have to break serve here. The zombie deck is a scary thing on the play. It might be the fastest goldfish in the format, is this black-green zombie deck. Um, it certainly has like the most efficient creatures. Um, that said, its creatures are all pretty... It doesn't really explode. It's just like, it's very consistent. I remember old aggro decks, in fact, you know, what is it? Old light weenie decks, their best play, their best draws were Savannah Lions turned to two Savannah Lions. <laughs> exactly. Those were, those were the draws which you were always were very scared about. And I kind of feel like when I'm watching this Black Green Zombies deck, I'm reminded of, well, you know, like Tragic Slip is like the Swords to Plowshares in the White Weenie deck. And it's like, I'm kind of reminded of these really old school aggro decks where it's like, why are you playing these creatures? Well, they all cost one and have a power of two. Why would I not play them? Exactly. It's 12 two power one drops, which is kind of that critical mass that you need nowadays. You know, yeah. back then you could sort of get away with playing things like Sundale Hawk and stuff like that, really because there were no other options. But now, 12 two power one drops. Lawleth Troll is, uh, well, it's more than a two power two drop. Shred Freak, two power two drop haste. And then, of course, topping out the curve with the messengers and the demon. Um, what do you think about Rancor in this deck? Well, Rancor, I think any deck that's black green, that's green based aggro, probably should be playing some number of Rancor. Um, I really like how. I think it's like your, it's one of your best late game cards, and it's really power, and it's, and it's passable enough in the early game that I wouldn't see a reason to not play it. He's playing three. Uh, I, I definitely like that number. I would not want to play four. 
Um, but that said, it's so good and such a game changer in a lot of matchups that you can risk having it be a dead draw. From watching his two games, it seems like the green mana is the biggest reason to not play Rancor in the deck. Um, yeah. He has four Overgrown Tomb, four Woodland Cemetery, and three Caverns, which help him cast, cast Lot Left Troll, but will not help him cast Rancor. Uh, both, for example, last game he did have a Rancor in his hand, but was unable to cast it. Right. All right. On to game three, both players opening seven. Kyle Wright is on the play. As we recall, he eked out a game one win, then got stuck on two game two and really didn't put up much of a fight. Um, Adam did have the Pillar of Flame game two, so I kind of what I, I think what I've seen before is can Adam get enough early pillars both games? Kyle's going to six cards here. Not really a big deal for the aggressive deck because, you know, like you said, he is just looking for that really great draw, that six power on turn two type of draw. And the, that's what he needs. The biggest concern for him here, I, what I would think, is that Adam has kept his seven, which means if Adam has kept a seven full of Pillar of Flames, then Kyle dropping the six cards is going to be very hard for him. It's going to be, it's going to be very significant. Right. Yeah, I mean, Adam, his deck is slow. He has to mess around with Faithless Looting. He has to waste time with Grizzly Salvage, Veilborn Ghoul. But if he gets the right draw against the aggro zombies deck, his deck will be almost unbeatable. If he right. has that critical mass of early removal. And really all it takes is one Olivia or one Huntmaster. One well-timed, powerful creature to take it away. After board, he'll have uh, three Olivias, two Huntmaster, and three Thrag Tusk. So eight creatures that if they land will make Kyle Wright's Right. will make a real problem for him. Huntmaster seems more beatable than Frag Tusk does to me for some reason, but uh, yeah, I would agree. Ooh, so nice. We just got a request for an Angel of Glory's Rise deck. Ooh. I would love to see uh, that. So there was the Block deck. The Block Angel of Glory's Rise deck, for those of you not familiar with it, was a combo deck that involved, I'm going to start to say a million different pieces here, but um, you'd Angel of Glory's Rise back a Fiend Hunter, and a Huntmaster of the Fells, and if you had a Vampire Aristocrat in play, a Falconmaster Aristocrat in play, you would then Fiend Hunt the Angel of Glory's Rise, gain two life off the Huntmaster, and you'd sacrifice the Fiend Hunter to the Aristocrat, therefore bring, and you sacrifice all the other guys to the Aristocrat, and then you bring the Angel back and looping all your humans back into play, and eventually you're hoping to gain infinite life, or you find a Zealous Conscripts and steal all their permanents, or something like that, so. Uh, That's that a great did, loop. It's a great loop. It's off <laughs> some play in block. I don't know if we have any here today. We'll, we can maybe try to hunt one down. Kyle looks pretty unhappy with his hand. Um, <laughs> he says, yep, I have six. Yeah, there's Not six happy there. about it. I'm trying to think if he can go to five. And really, I mean, five cards. Uh, really tough for him to have that draw of three two-power creatures. Right, I mean, so, so what he asked away is what, what a potential five-card draw would look like versus what he has here. He's going to drop to five. Adam Prozac, pretty happy about that. He knows how hard these events are. Ten rounds. I don't care if you're one of the best players in the room like Adam Prozac is. You still have to get through ten rounds. And it's mm -hmm. so easy for something like this to happen. Mulligan to five, game three of a match. Mediocre hand. Oh, you're out of the match. That's a match loss right there. Right. You can't afford too many of those. I like that Kyle aggressively mulligans towards something that's keepable, though. Um, I think not mulliganing is one of the biggest mistakes that people can make. Um, early on, especially when start first playing higher level magic, uh, mulliganing is available to you, mulliganing is available to you, and it's something that you, you probably have to do more often than you'd, want to, than you'd like to think. For sure. Mulliganing, uh, you know, I mean, you ask some world-class players, you know, Martin Yuza, you ask him, he'd say to mulligan every hit. You ask other world-class players, LSV, they'd say never mulligan. It's, it's really, it's a balancing act. Each player does it differently. I really think that most players don't mulligan enough, though. Right. That'd be, that'd be my inclination. Um, it really depends on your deck. You could have to, like, kind of probabilistically think about what your top three cards are. And then, you know, and, and really be honest with yourself about what you think they are. And then what that makes your hand into and think about what that makes your chances of winning, and then per picture a random six card hand, you know, then decide right. based off that. So Kyle will keep his five. Right, turn one, he has his one drop, turn one Gravecrawler. He found it. 
and Overgrown Tomb from Prosax, so no pillar. He has second land. Remember, Kyle only needs three lands to operate. Exactly. I mean, he can get by just fine with two as well. Right. Turn two, two more one drops. Wow, look at All that. Right. Two, one card left in his hand. So five can you, power. Can you beat the board? <laughs> five power on the play. <laughs> turn two, turn nothing. Two. It's probably just a Grissy Salvage, or possibly it could be a, a Golgari Charm out of Prozac. Golgari Charm, not doing too much, and it's Grizzly Salvage. Kyle Wright with, with some pretty big, some real game here. Yeah. No third play, and here comes the Grizzly Salvage. There's a Mutilate putting into the yard. He'll take the red source. Yep, he definitely uh, needs that. The speed with which he took it makes me think he doesn't have one. <laughs> yeah. Definitely an easy choice. The coming to play untapped dual land over the blood crypt or overgrown tomb. Uh, here it comes. I see Lawleth trolls. It was a blood crypt he took, right? He or took, he took uh, a dragon's dragon. So okay, yeah, definitely then. And here we go. What's this? It's a Lawleth troll. All right, and in we have Ogari charm in Kyle Wright's hand. He's gonna just pass the turn. No. Ooh, wow. And it, all right. So there's a Golgari charm, and that's great. If he shrivels, Pro, he, he can try to shrivel Prozac's lot left troll. Uh, Prozac probably has a creature in his hand to really stop that from working. Probably does, but we'll we'll see. I think he goes for it anyway, though. I think he has to. I mean, maybe everything but the Deathrite Shaman. No, the Deathrite Shaman will come He's in. He's gonna block Diagraph Ghoul. And now Kyle has a oh, there's also It's a tragic. There's also a oh, tragic wow. slip tragic in his hand. slip too. So, so Adam in response, he's going to tragic slip. And putting one one counter. Uh, I, you should have in response to Golgari Charm there and not slipped. Yeah, I definitely The problem is agree. that he, he can try for the Golgari Charm now, but if Adam has another creature, then both will fail at killing Lot with Stroll. And yeah, Kyle Wright, I think, realizes he messed up a little bit there. If he Golgari Charmed first, he'd be able to use the Tragic Slip post combat, kill it for sure. Right, so now he's, he's got to like weigh what his correct play is here. Does he want to try to kill it a second time? Does he want to? He's going to Golgari Charm to shrivel, and Adam does not have another creature. Does Adam have another creature? Oh, no, I think I think he used the charm for another mode. To regenerate, regenerate his own mode. creatures. Right. So he would regenerate his own creatures. And Olivia comes down. Wow. So Olivia will quickly take over this game unless Kyle Wright has something to stop it. Well, what you want to see Kyle do here is the tragic slip was probably best used to wait in killing a potential Olivia. Right. But then he would have a second Olivia. So possibly, you know... The, there, there's cases to be made both ways. Um, the biggest thing is that Kyle needs to protect his Deathrite Shaman. That card can win this game on its own. Uh, Olivia can kill it next turn, unfortunately. So, And, and that's probably what Adam Prosek will do. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really Kyle, right? Just uh, he has a, He's drawn a much. Sever the... Oh, no, sorry. It's not Sever. He has the Rakdos Shred Freak. 2-2 two, two Haste still can't really attack, though. Um... He can attack. He'll he'll, he'll yep, he can attack. He'll get the lot left troll. Yep. Adam uh, will have to block with that. Pushing troll. just he's essentially he's just pushing two damage. It gets the troll off the board, but the Olivia is gonna reign supreme here. Yep. In a couple turns. Absolutely. So Prosac down to eight. And I think as long as Prosac uses this Olivia to kill the Deathrite Shaman, I think Prosac's just fine. He will drop to eight, yep. but then Kyle will have a two-one Grave Crawler versus. An act of Olivia. Exactly. So really, that Valdarin, haven't seen a lot of it since Innistrad. And that, Adam has drawn Thrag Tusk. Wow. That's, that, should, that should be the... That should be enough. The proverbial nail? Yeah. Rakdos Key Rune. Interesting. I'm not hmm, sure that... Was that was not what I'm in my play. I like that. Oh, he has a Pillar of Flame in his hand. I see. That makes sense. Then. All right. So Olivia will swing, Olivia swinging for three, and eating grave crawler. So Kyler right down to 16. Yep. Olivia and, soars over. And you have to know that there's a pillar coming here. Yeah. And now he's getting ready, getting ready. <laughs> oh wow! Did Adam say go? He must have. All right. So Adam drops to six. Interesting. I think that's the only red card. It has to be a pillar of flame. Unless, of course, it's a faith. Oh, it's a faithless looting. Again, getting okay. those two confused. I, don't really wanna, I mean, 
I would try to get rid of this Death Rite Shaman. Uh, he's going to get rid of Sever the Bloodline. And pass the turn. Wow, so Adam Prozac kind of taking a risky risky route here. Uh, he, I'm really surprised. He, he really felt the need to deal Kyle Wright that three damage, but instead he just could have killed the Death Rite Shaman. Next he's going to attack for four. And for Agtusk, gaining five. And he's probably fine here. You know, all, all roads seem to lead to, to the same place. That's true, too. It would, it would take some phenomenal draws out of Kyle Wright to get him out of this. Pogar it would include Charm a... and Tragic Slip in Kyle's hand. Wow. And he's staring down an army. The Stethite Shaman's not really going to be able to race that army. No, definitely not. Four activations away. There aren't even four sorceries or instants in the graveyard. So Kyle Wright has some work to do. He has to hope that uh, Adam Prozac messes up. Adam Prozac looking to move to 2-0. and oh. oh, wow, Curse of Death's Hold. <laughs> That's just gravy at this point. Trying to lock it up even more. Looks like that's his Rakdos key rune mana. Trying to figure out the best way to play this turn. Decides it's Sever. Severing Deathrite Shaman. Now, would there be a reason to sever the Deathrite Shaman? The reason to sever it over pinging it twice would be to play around Golgari Charm. Which Kyle Wright did draw. So, heads up play by Adam Prozac. Also, he'll have enough mana to activate the key room, which might right. represent lethal here. 5, 10, 13, nope, that's only 13. And Prozac on the right looking supremely confident. Yeah. He knows this game is all but over. Probably reading Kyle for the, uh, for the Golgari charm right now. Kyle right in the tank, trying to figure it out. But really, the five-card hand caught up with him. He had no more gas left in the tank after his initial onslaught was stopped. He'll let it die. And Bogari Charm will come down to kill the Key Rune. Tragic Slip the Olivia. He'll drop to 11, but he has no cards. Yep, no cards versus Thrag Tusk. And Kyle Wright needs to draw a Giraffe's Messenger right here. He needs to draw a running Giraffe's Messenger. Right. When he put it into play tap for a moment there, I thought we were looking at an answer, but... So, Ghoul Grave Crawler, and, uh, you know, the Death Red Shaman in Kyle's Graveyard should be RFG. Thank you. Thanks for pointing that out. We'll make sure that happens. Yeah, I don't think he has a way to reanimate it, so I don't think we're too worried. I suppose another Death Red Shaman could eat it. Curse of Death Sold out of Adam Prosak, Finn's the Grave Crawler. And now Kyle Wright. Dire graph. Like I said, running great, running messengers would yep. be really good here. And he plays Pithing Needle. Pithing Needle. Not quite what he needs. That would have been great versus the Olivia earlier. He's needling. I'm not sure what the needle's on. Probably on Olivia. Another Thrag <laughs> Another <laughs> Thrag right. Tusk for the Needle. Adam Prozac up to 14. Kyle Wright, not a All miracle. Right. Not a miracle. Alright, so Adam Prozac defeats Kyle Wright two games to one. John Minrange. Defeating Black Green Zombies. Zombies deck was not able to really, you know, the Mold of Five and the deciding game hurt. Um, what's your opinion on the sideboarding of Pipping Needle? I really dislike that. Um, yeah, you need a way, I mean, you do need a way to kill Olivia, but between Appetite for Brain, between killing it in combat, between Tragic Slip, I think he has enough ways. Now it also hits a lot, lot less troll. That's true too. But at the same time, Lala Trolls still do its job. It'll still trade with something, meaning you'll two for one to yourself in a deck that has no real card advantage. So going more to the theory.